Hey guys, this is Surya from Skilling. Hope you're doing well. It's been a long time since we made some career series videos. One thing that we have seen is over the last few years, the need to understand more about electric vehicles is increasing. So today we thought of speaking about electric vehicles and the job market for electric vehicles, especially for electrical, electronics and mechanical engineers. So today I'm joined by Jagan. Jagan is our technical specialist in electrical and electronics and embedded systems. So hey Jagan. Hey Surya, thank you. So let's get started with two very popular questions. The questions that we get is, in electric vehicles, what are the jobs and how to get these jobs? A lot of students reach out to us irrespective of their experience, right? Freshers, people in their undergrad, people who are in their first or second job who are looking to get into electric vehicle domain, reach out to us and ask these two questions. So today we are going to speak about that. Let's kind of jump in. The first question that we want to kind of answer is what are the job roles? So Jagan, can you speak about what are the job roles in electric vehicles? Yeah, sure, Surya. Before we get into understanding the job roles that's available in EV, first we will uh, understand what is there, are, uh, what kind of workforce is actually needed for this market. The viewer should have a proper understanding of what are different subsystems that's getting into an electric vehicle. At the end, if I'm gonna get a job in EV market, I'm going to either work on inverter, charger, DC-DC converter or motor controller or a battery management system. So essentially, people will end up working in an inverter or a charger exactly. or a DC-DC converter, a motor controller or a battery management exactly. system. Exactly. And all this and are combined into a particular uh, system which is called an electric vehicle. Yes. Right? yes. And uh, all these are called embedded systems. Yeah. So. The simple definition of embedded system is any system that has some sensors and that is running an application logic which is driven by a microcontroller. That's what you call it as an embedded system. So if you jot down this, all these things can be or all the subsystems can be viewed as a embedded system by itself. So in this embedded systems, what are the job roles? What kind of roles should students apply for? On a very larger team, we can say or we can classify that into two categories. One is if you want to get a job on embedded system, you can land up either on application development or you can become a firmware developer. So if, if you are starting your career with application development, you can start with verification validation of the application that's developed by somebody else or you yourself can become an application developer. The same is the case with the firmware development. So you can become a firmware developer or you can end up becoming a firmware validation engineer. And a lot of jobs are in the firmware development and validation aspect of it? Yes. Okay. Can you speak about the thought process, right? Like say for example, application development or validation. Mm. What kind of applications do they develop or validate? Yeah. Let's take an example of motor controller or battery management system. So the main functionality of battery management system is to identify or estimate the health of the battery and identify the state of the charge of the battery. For example, everybody use our common mobile phone. You will see how much percentage of battery is remaining. The same is should be uh, estimated and should be indicated to the user in a EV. Okay. So the main functionality of battery management system is to continuously monitor this. So this is, this becomes your application. Okay. So if I, uh, measure the current from the current if I estimate the SOC and if I find or if I relate a mathematical expression or if I develop a logic to compute this that becomes the role of an application developer. Okay. Whereas the whole system is going to run on a microcontroller which is reading the value from a sensor. So integrating the microcontroller and the sensor part and writing the necessary basics driver software for uh, reading the sensor value all those things will fall under the firmware development. Okay, since there are a lot of components, a lot of firmware development roles exactly. are essentially needed. Yes. Right? Yes. So great. So now that we know a lot of job roles are in embedded systems, even for electric vehicles. And in embedded systems, firmware development and validation has the higher number of job opportunities across the category from a fresher to a two-year experience to a seven-year seven experience. experience. Right? Yes. So what are the skills that are needed to kind of become a firmware developer. Let's say if you if you want to start your career to be a or to become a, a firmware developer, the primary skill that is expected in the market is you need to be very strong with embedded C programming. When we say embedded C programming, the essential skills that are required is bare metal programming, uh, microcontroller, hands-on knowledge, 
and uh, the communication protocols. So when we say microcontroller and our knowledge, so people should have a very clear understanding uh, about ARM architecture. So they may end up working with microcontrollers that's coming from multiple vendors. So anyone with a better understanding on a 32-bit ARM architecture with a solid C programming can be uh, can potentially become a firmware developer and a validation engineer if they are having even zero plus years of experience. So you need to have a background on testing tool and uh, decent exposure on tools like Vectorcast or LDRA. Okay. Along with very good sense of programming. Okay. And and so that's what they get with embedded six. Exactly. Embedded C essentially goes, gives them a good sense of programming mm. and an exposure on LDRA and a knowledge of Misra C yes. will be very helpful. Great. Yes. Then comes your bare metal programming, microcontroller, hands-on, and communication Super protocols. Yes. Can you dig deeper into these three things? So now we have mastered embedded C essentials, or you, you became a C programmer. The next step is to understand the architecture of a given microcontroller and write your driver or write your application using embedded C for that art, uh, architecture. So you name any microcontroller that's available in market, which could be coming from Infineon, which could be coming from Texas Instruments, which could be coming from ST Microelectronics. All these primarily follows ARM architecture. So one should be very much comfortable with ARM architecture. They need to know what are the steps uh, for writing or for doing bare metal programming and uh, what are common communication protocols, how can I use those protocols and all, it's, it's a very simple uh, thing. You need to have exposure on one programming language, which is C, okay. and uh, one architecture. It could be a third to bit ARM architecture, and uh, you need to have basic hands on on that microcontroller. So, okay. this alone is sufficient to uh, get a job in the firmware development. Okay. Alone. So, essentially, those three fundamentals, right? I think the three fundamentals Jagan essentially mentioned was. Uh, embedded C programming, programming. Uh, firmware oh. development with the micro microcontrollers, yes, right? and uh, hands on, hands on, hands with, on with arm, arm, arm. Right, great. So these are three things to crack into embedded systems jobs or in in specifically in electric vehicles, right? Exactly. Now, if we go into application development, what are the skills that you need to essentially have? So as I told you, application development is focused more towards the particular system. Let's say for example, you want to design an application which estimates the state of a charge of the battery. Okay. In application development, you really need to have a very strong system knowledge. For example, if you are working on motor controller or if you are working on BMS, so you need to have uh, what is the math behind that or what is that application is doing. And that application logic is implemented with uh, tools like uh, Simulink or Stateflow. And, uh, the algorithm that's developed from Simulink state flow is further converted into the code using some sort of automatic code generation tool. And then that is flashed onto the hardware. So in this workflow, one has to have a very clear exposure to uh, how to validate the Simulink model that's developed. So you need to have better understanding of what is model in loop simulation, what is software in loop simulation, and what is hardware in loop simulation. So if you master these three skills, you will become a better application developer. Even with zero plus years of experience, you may end up having a good job or you can aspire to start your career with application development. So one of the things that we hear about is essentially there are almost 100,000 jobs in the embedded electric vehicle uh, space alone, right? Yes, yes. Uh, what are the companies that are hiring? What are the companies that need these embedded engineers. Can you kind of categorize and essentially give some examples? Yes, we can categorize the job into multiple groups. Let's say, for example, we have OEM, uh, like let's take uh, uh, Tata or Mahendra or Olvo, whomsoever it is. So, so any any original equipment manufacturer who essentially manufactures a car yeah. is a OEM. It's a OEM. Right. So business starts from them. Let's say Tata is making a infotainment system or let's say Tata is making uh, making a electric vehicle. They themselves can make a battery management system or they can outsource or they can buy a battery management system which is developed by some other solution provider. Okay. So this could be a potential solution provider like companies like Zetaf, Bosch, Continental, yeah, Vitasco, so many solution providers are there who will sell their product to a OEM okay. as such, a, a finished product. For example, Bosch is quite popular in the market for uh, 
more than four decades with their engine management system. Okay. So similarly, Continental is very much popular for their uh, um, motion control hardware. Okay. So vehicle motion controller like electronic stability program. So these are coming as a product from this solution providers. Right. So then we have other category uh, where we have so much of ER and D uh, jobs, job openings which is your service providers. And ER&D is your engineering research and development. Exactly. Right? exactly. And, and service providers like Capit, Scient, Explio, l and Technologies, Tata Technologies, Tata, Tata LXC, LXC, and uh, even TCS. Yes. Right? yes. Great. And then comes our tool vendors, your yes. MathWorks, LDRA, yeah. Electrobit. So, the, so, so essentially, jobs are available in the original equipment manufacturers, solution providers, service providers, and tool, tool vendors. vendors. Great. So, and this is why the job market is essentially increasing, right? Like almost 100,000 jobs uh, exactly. that people are essentially looking for. One of the things that students ask for, right? Where do I get to learn all of this? Right? Yeah. How do I get to learn of all of this? So, that is one common question. While people know the electric vehicle industry is booming, there are a lot of jobs there. Are, and also, they want to understand what kind of jobs. They also want to understand where can they learn, right? And, and that's one of the things that we want to cover at the last part of this video, which is one of the major courses that we have launched is PG program in embedded systems, right? We have a full-fledged offline program that is starting in June 15th in Chennai, which has 100 seats where you get hands-on exposure, where you work Monday to Friday, eight hours every day for almost six months, right? So that's some a place that you can essentially come visit and enroll in that particular program. If you are looking for an online program, there is our PG in electric vehicle design and development, which covers both application development and validation and hardware development and validation. So these are two programs that you can definitely look at if you have, if you want to get into the embedded systems for electric vehicle domain or in general electric vehicle as an electrical mechanical or an automotive engineer, right? So thanks, thanks a lot for joining us, Jagan. Uh, it thanks was great you. having you. Thank it's you all. Okay.